Okay, welcome to Rock, Paper, Scissors GUI version using TK Inter by Tokyo EdTech. That is me. Quick shout out to my channel members, Kevin and Paul. Tonight, I'm going to show you, or today, as wherever it is, wherever you're at, I'm going to show you how to make a quick Rock, Paper, Scissors GUI version. So let's take a look at what I'm planning to do. Now, this program I'm sharing with you is actually done by one of my students, and I thought she did a really great job with this. So I wanted to show you what she did, and I'm going to walk you through the steps to recreate that. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And you can see that this is a GUI version of Rock, Paper, Scissors. And you see here it says Jonkin. That's because here in Japan, we call Rock, Paper, Scissors Jonkin. I don't know why. That's just their word for it. So I'm going to go ahead and click Rock. So you can see here the computer chose Rock. I chose Rock. And the result up here is a tie. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So a couple things. Uh, the way GUIs work, we've got some different GUI elements here. We've got one, two, three, four buttons. We've got a label, and we've got a second label, and we actually have a third label here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and recreate that as closely as I can. And you can see there's a bunch of code here, and we'll walk through how to do that. So you can see these are the various you know, labels, uh, buttons, etc., etc. Now, if you don't know how to do a GUI, um, I'm assuming you know a little bit about TK Inter for this particular tutorial. I have a couple other tutorials that actually walk through it a little bit more step by step, but uh, let's give it a shot here. Okay, so first thing I need to do for my GUI is to create the actual window. So I'm going to be using the TK Inter module, and I'm going to make a root window equals TK Inter dot. Actually, I don't remember the code, so I'm going to go cheat over here. Ah, it's tk.tk, .tk, that's right, tk. That actually creates your, your root window. And then at the very bottom, the very last line of my code should be root, oops, root dot main loop. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save that and run it and just test it and see what happens. So you can see here, I've got my little window now. Okay, so if you remember, we had a title and that title uh, was Jonkin for the Japanese version. We'll, we'll call it Rock, Paper, Scissors. And I'm going to put it by Tokyo Ed Tech. A little shout out to myself there. Um, so again, if you're not sure, I strongly recommend just testing things and making sure that they work you know, as you're going along. And then if you recall, uh, she already measured it out, so thank you to my student. I'm not using her name because she's uh, uh, not, uh, she's under, you know, uh, 18. So root dot geometry, and I think she had it at 400x500, and we'll, we'll go ahead and stick with that. And for some weird reason, this has to be in quotation marks. It's, it's not a weird reason, but that's just the way it is. So let's go ahead and test that, and there we go. So. This is our basic root window. So you can see how easy that is to do in TK Inter. So what I tell my students uh, is to design their GUI first. So what we did was we designed this on paper and then we create our widgets. So if you recall, we had a widget for the result, a widget for the player's I guess, choice, a widget for the computer choice, and some buttons for doing things. So I'm just going to go over to here and take a look at that. So we got some labels. Okay, so I like, yeah, I thought she did a great job here with naming everything. I was really, really happy to see this. Uh, again, you don't have to be this you know, precise, I guess, with your naming, but it just makes life super duper easy, especially for beginners. So I'm going to go ahead and just get started with that. So label uh, result equals tk enter dot result and oops not result that is a label sorry so tk enter label and it's going to go into my root window and when I start it my text is going to be uh, you know choose something like that and if I run this now again if you haven't seen my other GUI tutorials uh, you might not be familiar with this so if I run this now you don't see anything. Okay, so you also have to, in this case, we're going to use pack. It's one of the built-in geometry managers. There's a, there's a few different ones, but pack is the simplest one. And label is not defined. 
So this is label underscore result, not label dot result. My bad. And now you can see the label is there. And the text choose is also there. So next we had the button for rock, button for paper, and a button for scissors. So I'm going to say this. So button rock equals tk enter dot button. It's also going in the root window. Uh, its text is going to be rock. And for buttons, we need to connect the buttons to a function. So in this case, I'm going to connect it to the function called rock. And same thing, button rock dot pack. Now, if I run this, I'm going to get an error. Let's take a look at that. Okay. So you can see down here, something beginners really got to get used to doing is reading these error messages because they tell you basically what you need to know for the most part. And you can see here, line 16, so this line here, it says button rock, it tells you the actual code that you typed in. It says name error, rock is not defined. So what's telling me is it doesn't know what this rock is. And of course it doesn't know because we haven't created the function yet. So what I would do at this point is type create functions. And I'm gonna go ahead and create my functions. So rock, I've got rock. And since I don't know what code's in there yet, I'm just gonna type pass. Pass is a placeholder, and we'll delete that later. And I'm also gonna have paper. And I'm gonna have scissors. And I think there was a reset function, so resets and pass. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now let's run it and see if we get an error. Okay, great. So rock, okay, it doesn't do anything yet because the function only passes, but let's go ahead and just do the rest of our GUI first. So we're gonna have a button for rock, paper, and scissors. So I usually do this a lot, you'll see. Um, I get something working and then just copy and paste if I'm just making a few changes. Again, this is something I, I do recommend to beginners especially and is to be careful with your naming so button scissors calls uh, has a label scissors and it calls a function called scissors so it's just really really consistent and kind of easy to understand let's go ahead and test that make sure everything looks like it should okay so rock paper scissors and then we also have the labels. So I think the way it was done, we had label computer choice. And we'll start that out blank with nothing. And again, we got a packet. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And make a label user choice. So this is where we'll display the rock, paper, scissors. And then finally, we needed a reset button. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that real quick as well. So reset. And text and command. Again, I can't emphasize enough just consistency in naming. It's just really gonna make your life super duper easy. So let's go ahead and test that one last time. So basically I've got my GUI set up. Okay, so I've got my result label here. I've got my buttons here. I've got my reset button here. And notice there's nothing here because we haven't put anything into it. It's just blank text. Now, so the next part is really to deal with the logic of the game. So let's take a look real quick at the, the outcome matrix for this particular game. So you can see here, we've got three choices for the player, three choices for the computer, rock, paper, scissors in both cases. So if the player chooses rock, computer chooses rock, we got a tie. So you can see RR is a tie, PP is a tie, and SS is a tie. Now if the player chooses paper and the computer chooses rock, uh, the player is the winner because paper covers rock. However, if the player chooses scissors and the computer chooses rock, 
then the computer wins. So you, everybody's, I think almost everybody in the world is familiar with this game. So this kind of shows how it works. So we need to code that into our game. So a couple things we got to think about is how do we get the computer to make a choice? The user is making a choice based on which button he or she presses. But the computer choice needs to be random. So what I can do here is I can use the random module. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know, random number equals random dot rand int. And we've got three choices. So one, two, or three. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert that. So if random number equals one, computer choice equals rock. L if random number equals two, then computer choice equals paper. And I could do an else here, but let's do an L if just in case there's something wrong with our code we don't recognize. Two and say computes computer choice equals scissors. All right, so the computer's made a choice at the start of the game. Notice this is out here in the global space. And normally we don't really recommend using global variables, but we'll just go ahead and do it this way this time. Um, just because it's probably a little bit easier for beginners. It's something as you, as you learn a little bit more, you learn ways to get around that. But for now, let's just keep it simple. So let's just go ahead and deal with the rock. So again, back to this outcome matrix. So the computer, so the player has chosen rock. So the computer can choose rock, paper, or scissors. So if it's rock and rock, we have a tie. If it's rock and paper, the computer wins. And if it's rock and scissors, the player wins. So because I'm inside the rock function, I know that I can assume I've chosen rock. So what I can do here is I can say, you know, deal with the, you know, choices. So if, just like my student had, she did a really good job here, if player choice, actually, I'm not gonna say that because we know the player choice here is rock. Um, so I'm gonna say, so if the computer choice equals rock, right now I'm just gonna say print, you know, tie. L if, computer choice equals paper, say print, so paper beats rock, so print computer wins. And then otherwise, our only remaining choice is that the player wins. I want to code it straight out just in case. Computer choice equals scissors, print user wins. A player wins, we'll say. Okay, so let's go ahead and just test this out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit rock. And you can see down here it says player wins. Now, we don't actually know what the, the computer choice was, but we're assuming that in this case the player won, then the computer choice was uh, scissors. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to display that information in the GUI. Okay, so we've got three labels. So we've got label result, label computer choice, and label user choice. Let's just go ahead and do that then. So if it's rock, we know the following. So we know label uh, user choice, and I'm gonna do this method text equals uh, let's say, I'll just put rock for now. Okay. And then I'm going to say label, well, we don't know. So rock. So in the case of tie, so we know that the label computer choice, and this is how you change the text in a, a label, equals uh, rock. 
And what I can do there now is copy this and and the same thing here. Text equal scissors. And instead of printing, I want to say label result tag ifs text equals tie. And then here, this is going to be computer wins. And this one's going to be player wins. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit rock. Okay, scissors, rock, <laughs> player wins. Okay, now nothing changes here. So the reset doesn't work. So let's go ahead and implement reset real quick. So reset. So when we reset the game, the only thing we really, well, a couple things we need to do is we need to do this again. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste that here and indent that all. But the thing you have to remember is that these are global variables. Again, it's not a particularly a good programming practice to use, but for now we'll, we'll stick with those. So we've got random number and computer choice. Now, I don't really need to worry about random number at this point, but I do need to worry about the computer choice. So I'm going to say global computer choice. And the reason is that computer choice is accessed outside this function. So I need it to be able to access this global computer choice variable. And that's why I use the, the global keyword. Okay. This random number, I do only need to use it in this section, so I don't have to worry about that. Okay. Now, I could just basically, I could simplify this, take this out, and make just do a function call, but I'll just leave this for now because uh, it's a little bit easier to understand, and I think it's, yeah, it, it works. So let's just leave that there for now. Again, this is a you know, tutorial for you know, relative beginners. Um, you know, my student whose code I showed you earlier, she did such a great job. You know, she's only been coding for like three and a half months. And so I was really happy that she was able to convert this program uh, to work with a GUI. It was her choice to do this. This was kind of an open-ended project. So great job uh, for her. Um, let's see. Okay, so let's go ahead and test that. So I'm going to hit rock. Okay, so scissors and rock, player wins. I'm going to hit reset. Click this again. Okay, so you see paper, computer wins. Reset, okay, scissors, player wins. So it looks like it's working. Okay, and now we got a tie. So we've seen all three different examples. So the next step is to kind of make it look a little bit better. Well, actually, maybe the other thing is with reset, we might want to reset the uh, labels. So label computer choice, you know, text uh, equals you know, blank. Label uh, user choice, Oops. text equals blank, and I guess result as well. So label result, was it? Oops, label, not label. Label result text equals, or maybe just, I think I had it as choose initially, something like that. Oops, no parentheses. Let's test that real quick. So rock. Player wins, scissors rock, reset, choose rock, scissors rock. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now, I want to get in there those really cool ASCII designs that my student was using. Okay. So, you can see here, we have a rock shape, we have a paper shape, and we have a scissor shape. So, one kind of way I'm going to make this code just a little bit more efficient is I'm going to take these images and put them into a variable. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. Again, this will be linked to my, my GitHub. I'll put a link down below. So I'm going to say, you know, uh, ASCII art. 
So I'm going to say rock uh, image equals. And notice I'm using three quotes. So I'm going to use paper image equals, and I'm going to do scissors image. And so again, I'm just going to copy this from my student. And, but you know, uh, you'll be able to copy it from my uh, GitHub. <laughs> so let's see here. Three, oops. Um, oh, it's right there. And one, two, three. And the scissors image. Let's go ahead and get that. Oops. Did I do paper? Let's make sure I didn't screw that up. That's scissors. Ooh, that's scissors. That's not paper. Do. Let's go ahead and copy that. And there's paper. And Okay, so, all right, I think it's good. So what I'll do here is if the computer choice equals rock, I'm gonna go ahead and put rock image. And then here I'll put, you know, paper image. Here I'll put scissors image. And then up here I will put rock image. So that way I don't have to keep having these images you know, all the way through the code. Okay, so I'm gonna hit rock. Okay, so there's mine, and there is the computer. Now you can see how it's a little bit messed up. Okay, and that, that, was, that was to be expected. Okay, so I'm gonna hit reset and test it again. Okay, so far so good. And the reason that this is messed up, there, actually there's two reasons, is that the label is automatically centered, and so that's kind of throwing things off. And the other thing is that the font is uh, a proportional font. So the width of the characters is different depending on the character. And we don't want a proportional font. We want a non-proportional font. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my labels. And I'm going to take a look at the code my student has just to make sure I don't mess this up. So in the label you know, widget creator, creation, we need to choose the font. And this, sh you should have Courier on your computer, uh, hopefully. If not, you, ought, you may have to choose a different font that is monospaced. And we justify it left. And so you say justify equals TK enter left. Note this is in capital letters and the font is Courier. So now if I save that and run it, and I hit Rock, now you can see how it looks just like it is supposed to. So the computer wins because the computer chose paper. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna hit Reset, hit Rock, player wins because Rock beats scissors. And Reset, and Rock. We get a tie because we have two Rocks here, which is pretty cool. Um, it's working just exactly as expected. And yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. The only thing I might change on this program is I might put the result down below. I'm gonna put that uh, down here before the reset button, but after the labels. I think that for me, that works a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that and test it. So I'm gonna hit rock. Okay, so we got uh, scissors versus rock player wins. I, I kind of like that, just that arrangement a little better. Um, yeah, we can go with that. So now, basically all I need to do is to do the same thing, but for paper and scissors. Okay, so you can see how compact this code is and just kind of makes it a little bit easier to code it. So I know this is working as it should, so I'm gonna copy that and paste it into here. And so in this case, the user is choosing paper. So if it's paper, it's a tie. If the computer, so it should be a paper image, because that's what a tie, so paper and paper. Um, what else do we do here? So the computer choice equals rock. So paper beats rock 
So actually, we'll make this scissors since the computer wins. And that's going to be scissors image. And down here, this should be rock. Because rock. No, wait, paper. Yeah, rock. So player. So the computer has rock. Player has paper. Player wins. And the computer choice is rock image. Okay, so you got P here, paper image here. You got S here, scissors image here. You've got R here, rock image here. So I'm just going to go ahead and test that and play around with that. Just make sure it's working. Okay, so I'm going to hit paper. Okay, so we got scissors and paper. Computer wins. Let's reset. Paper. Um, computer wins again. So I'm going to reset. Make sure it's resetting. Okay, rock. Play, player wins because the player chose paper. I'm going to hit reset. And I'm going to hit rock and just make sure that's still working. Computer wins because the computer chose paper. Okay, so I think it's working pretty well. And then we got to do the same thing for the scissors choice by the player. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be scissors. Oops. And so if the computer choice is scissors, we've got a tie. And this should be the scissors image. And if the computer choice equals what does what beats scissors it should be rock because rock beats scissors and then we would use rock image here and then if the computer choice is paper player wins and paper image okay, so let's go ahead and test that last one so I'm gonna hit scissors so scissors and scissors tie so reset scissors so scissors and rock rock beats scissors computer wins reset okay scissors beats paper player wins and then again you should, it's good to always go back and just test to make sure everything else is working as you expect it and we've got a lot of ties here tie i'm hitting reset tie i'm hitting reset <laughs> Okay, so I, I found that with TK Enter and not TK Enter, but with the random module, I do find you get a lot in a row of the same. It's it's always disconcerting. Um, so I'm gonna hit reset there and test out rock. Okay, we got a tie. Okay, and rock uh, paper beats rock. Computer wins. So yeah, that is that is it. That is the GUI version of rock paper scissors. And again, a lot of thanks, uh, many many thanks to my students who again did a, such a great job with this and I wanted to share that because I, I love to share my students success and uh, yeah so again she did such a really good job converting our text-based version of this program to use a GUI again after only three and a half months of class so you know give her a round of applause and uh, you know again I'll put this code uh, a link down below so if you haven't subscribed please do if you're thinking about it please become a channel member and support the channel more directly and uh, yeah, keep on coding. Take care. Have a good one.